The reasons for my life are in a million faces. Like empty promises, these seeds I have sown. Slipping through the madness that kept me from the cold. The reason for my life cannot be bought or sold. But all the sweet delight to sing with all my mind, to spark the inner light. I want to burn and bright. You're not alone. You're not alone. Y'all know the rest of it. Good morning. That is a uh, uh, shout out. Rest in peace to my sweet sister, Sister Minnie, Minnie Ripperton. At 13 years old, I did a yeah, I was 13. 13 or 14, 14, maybe a little older. Um, I did a show at the Airy Crown Theater in Chicago with Miss Minnie, Minnie Ripperton. And it hurt me so bad when Miss Minnie died. I think I believe she died um July 13th, 19 uh boy, 79. Uh, I remember the day because I remember she was such a warm spirit. You know, a lot of times you meet your idols when you're a kid, and you like, ooh. <laughs> you know, or, you know, they don't have time for you, but Minnie was a person that was so sweet. She came over to where we were um, and told us to continue to, to keep going, and that told me I had a, a real strong voice for a child. And so my spirit loves many and that song was a shout out and remembrance of her this morning but with that being said and that out the way y'all we need help and right now i'm speaking to some of uh not even i'm talking about women right now this is this is um this little segment is dedicated to any woman who has been stunted at the age of 13, 14, 15, because you probably had a baby at that age. And so what happens emotionally, you get stuck right there and you don't mature like you should if your system hadn't been shocked. I don't care what nobody say. At least that's what's going on right now. Because we have a situation here where a lot happens in where immature parents are being called on the phone by their parents. I mean, immature parents are being called on the phone by their children complaining of a teacher or a bus driver or a student, another student. And these parents are so damn immature and stupid that, and I hate to use that word, but I'm just going to call it like I see it um, because you won't get it no other way. Okay? So I'm about to come down on you hard today because some of this stuff is just freaking ridiculous. And we and this is a part of the reason people think we're crazy. And a lot of it is we are. Be, because we're doing it, it's self-inflicted. I told y'all about that study, and that's why I love I'm going to be over the, all over the place a little bit this morning. That's why I love those experiments. You know, they be doing on PBS, my favorite uh, station, by the way where they put all those rats inside of boxes, okay? And they have them crowded, like, like in the ghetto, okay? I just want you to deal with it. Because, see, these social engineers, they know exactly what they're doing to your, to your mind, okay? It's a battle for it. I keep telling you. So what they do is they put these rats in these boxes, and the boxes are contained, and then they, they're small because the rats get bigger and bigger, right? And what do you think they start doing? They start biting each other. They start fighting each other, eating off each other. Arms. I mean, oh, it is just, it's just morbid what goes on. Because they begin to attack each other. They can't take it. The crowded conditions. They're in the uh, uh, the houses the size of matchbox. You understand what I'm saying? So the kids, so the, the rats get crazy. So here's what the scientists have learned, though. But they won't tell you unless you like to watch these type of documentaries. But this is how they socialize and understand what your butt is going to do. 
they've realized when they take a, a certain amount of rats out the box, because maybe say at first you had 20 in there and you had them in a small box. So they realize when they take the uh, uh, 10 of them out and put them in a different environment, maybe a, a wider space, um, a different box. Guess what, y'all? A bigger box. They still start biting on each other, eat each other. Because they've created a condition in these rats' mind that they need to just survive and struggle and do this. So it's very difficult. So see, these social engineers know this. And this is what they've done to us. Same thing with the plantation mentality of making these babies. Babies at 12 and 13 and, 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 and for the sense of no guidance, no... um. A, a, a preparation, no kabibi, no rites of passage, no, um, uh, oh boy, <laughs> vanguard or MGTs, if you will, to take these women from girlhood to womanhood. So you might have a bunch of 13 year olds out here not knowing uh, what their responsibility is, even in terms of a young lady. And then they get pregnant by guys 21, 22. Some of them don't even get uh, pregnant by boys their age. But here's the sad part. The result of this is basically you have some women that are so immature that they have taught their children not to respect authority because if, if, the, if the kid is complaining about a teacher, the mother going to go to the school and beat up the teacher in front of the child, which is a travesty, which is a good thing about this COVID. See, y'all don't really understand what I'm, where I'm trying to go with this. I saw the worst thing, and maybe because my daughter um, has her CDLs, and I think at one time she tried to drive the bus, and um, she had parents that were so crazy that they would come and meet at the bus stop. They want to fight. Uh, they, just insane. They don't have nothing better to do with their time because a lot of them home all day. What are they going to do? They're going to beat up the bus driver. I know this sounds crazy, too. A lot of y'all. But a lot of y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. They all up and down YouTube. So what I want to share with you is a, a a situation that you can't blame white people for today. We ain't blaming. We ain't playing no blame game. Today we're going to deal with this type of mentality in our community that will a woman that will chase a damn school bus down because her daughter got into a fight on the bus. And she feels the best way to resolve this is because the, the bus driver does not want to open the door. The daughter called the mother on the phone. And let me just say this. Let the video speak for itself. Because it's crazy. Hope y'all can see that. I should have got my tablet, but can y'all see? These is kids on the bus fighting, right? Stuff that kids do. Now I done found an area to pull, the, but she calls her mother. I'm sorry, y'all. This ain't even funny. This is so ignorant. This is her daughter. Look at her little ignorant daughter that she done taught how to behave like this. She's the other one that was fighting on the bus. Now the mother is swerving the car in front of the bus so they can crash. There's other children, people's children on the bus too, mind you. 
Now look at the daughter. She's got a broom and she's bashing the window. Look at that. This is learned behavior. Look at this ignorance. Sheer madness. Now, this is unacceptable. And it's so damn crazy. It started with an argument over a cell phone. The bus was headed home from Nicolay High School. Police say the girl who started the fight called her mom, who soon caught up with the bus. Oprah! Your alma mater, Oprah. She attacked the door with a hammer. Again, slowly. But then when she pulled in front of you and came running with that hammer, what did you think? I was surprised, and I actually started like, like, oh my God, is she serious? Yes, she was very serious. She looked a little deranged. I was surprised. Child News spoke with the bus driver by phone. The driver says the mom chased her for miles, driving erratically and trying to cut her off. She finally forced her to a stop here near Willow Glen and Mill Road. <laughs> Kid screamed hysterically. The mom approached again with the hammer. The woman's daughter demanded to be let off the bus. Then the girl grabbed a broom. The bus company sent back up, and the driver eventually let the girl off. No one answered at the home of the woman with the hammer. Prosecutors charged her with disorderly conduct and ticketed the two girls who fought. The driver says the kid's safety was her first concern. She wasn't getting on the bus with the hammer. In Glendale, Colleen Henry, WISN, 12 News. <laughs> Colleen, you bitch. Anyway. <laughs> All right, y'all. Y'all heard it. You heard it. You heard it. You heard it. And I guess I have a little compassion because, again, I told you my daughter drives the bus. And um, I've, she's told me plenty of horror stories. Um, but they, because, and, and some of these bus drivers make, can make good money if you can put up with that madness. You know, like $30 an hour, some routes. Um, that's pretty good. But for that type of craziness, it ain't even worth it. And that's what I'm talking about. That mother was a totally disgrace. She was an embarrassment to not only the women, to parents, everywhere. Mother or father. That right there, teach your child that that's the way that you resolve stuff that you can't handle. You're already fighting on the bus over a cell phone, which is bad enough. Okay? Secondly, she calls you on the phone. So I guess you come to fight too. Children on the bus. Now, some of y'all don't understand that when your child get into a fight and they call you and you go and beat up somebody else's child, you need to go to jail because you're stupid. You're stupid. You don't beat up other people's children because your child done told you some craziness. And the reason why I know there are people out there that are crazy because I've seen that in my own family. I've seen my two little cousins, they were maybe like nine, fighting each other. Um, one of them's dad came over and pushed the one out of the way that was beating up his son. And in fact, this boy was younger than his son. And so, so now you traumatize him. This parent didn't give a damn about traumatizing nobody else's child on the bus. All she had was tunnel vision and her child. That takes a certain amount of um, immaturity, out of controlness. Like these people and parents that give their children cans and knives and, and, and guns to take to school to handle their business that way. Y'all need help and you need therapy. You need to come on in the mental house and let's talk about it because this is not a way to resolve shit. You don't do that. And please stop it. Please understand there's other people that love their child just as much as you love yours. And you have no right to terrorize my child 
on the bus because yours is a fool that you ain't raised. There I said it. Because somebody ain't raised you. 